Hey, Joe Kulas here once again. Sorry about the uh, engine noise in the background here, but got my car going because this winter's pretty cold out today. But one, there's a video I've been meaning to get out for a while, and uh, what, I mean, one of the main things is here, the reason I also got the camera back here is so I can get a better angle, didn't bring the tripod out today, so. But is on the, you know, uh, more or less considered, it's the double tap, bang, bang, the bang, compared to bang, bang, bang. But uh, you know, it's for civilians more or less, and you got your, it's a double tap, it's exactly that. Bang, 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 bang. Now, a couple things about it. If you're doing long range shooting, or uh, you know, anything of that sort, and anything even like, I'd say over 100 yards easily, um, you know, 50 yards I'd say probably is too far, but, if you've ever kind of, uh, back, if you've ever, you know, just try, you know, looking, you know, bang, 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 not work at all. So, you know, whether you're sitting down, you know, standing up, actually, I should put the camera up higher. I'm standing while I do this, because, I mean, if you were to do it, get this camera on here a little bit better. But let me shift the metal plate. But you know when you're when you're standing, you do take quite a bit of a shock, shock absorption compared to obviously sitting down or prone. But that, that's a different story. But the thing about it is, it can work, and it very well does. But it takes quite a bit of training. And when you're shooting the trigger, and the gun is unloaded, but when you're shooting the trigger, you know a lot of people they get good at the and you know no wrist movements, pulling of the gun, jerking or of any sort, and they do a lot of that. But what you're not used to is, you know, in a row. So, and you know, whether whether you're someone that has it a little bit farther away, and you're good, again, I'm not having it completely shoulder holstered because I'm looking at the camera here, but, you know, when you're used to, or when you're used to, a lot of people, you know, they'll make that second mistake and they'll jerk it. So that's something to really, you know, take into concept when you're doing it. Uh, besides that too, um, if you don't have a cheek weld on your gun, it doesn't work for shit. I'll kind of put, but again, that's for me. Uh, some people might be able to do it, but for, you know, a little bit farther distance, if you don't have a cheek rest at all, it does not work at all. Cause you really gotta implant that gun into you. And, you know, even then, you know, taking the right stance, not just kind of standing. So, um, you know, with that, I mean, it's it takes time, but you need a cheek rest. You need to get kind of used to that whole, you know, pulling it and not, you know, moving your gun around, you know, just kind of the same when you're first get used to shooting the gun. And then, obviously, just the overall holding of it, you know, whether you got a front grip or you're just, you know, holding it on the rail or forearm in general or magwell or, and as well, you know, I will say the magwell definitely does not work so well for it, but it's something to get used to. No one's really perfect at it, I would say, uh, you know, until you get just a ridiculous amount of, you know, trying in there, but, you know, I mean, you just give it some trying and, you know, the more you get used to it, the better you'll be, but a lot too is when you shoot, you get that, this goes kind of with hand in hand with jerking, you'll get that, you know, and just, okay, now, compared to that recoil, kind of think of it as, you know, I gotta learn how to manage that as well, so, again, a little bit of a funky angle, I'll try to, oh god, I'm standing on ice as well, so, I'm not just, You get used to your primary. God, I didn't have other mag loaded either. Um, but what people primarily do there is again, you're used to just pulling it once at a time, you know, and you really need to get used to that to tap, 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 to tap. So, you know, definitely try that a lot before 
you even try it. Because again, you have that recoil and you know, with it empty, you just to tap, to tap. But with that recoil, you gotta remember, ooh, uh, tap, or tap, ooh, uh, tap. And it doesn't, it doesn't work as you'd think it would. So, um, it's a lot of trial and error, a lot of getting used to. Um, double tapping can work, but anything over 50 yards really, I don't suggest anything with an actual scoped gun, you know, like, uh, even if you got a Leopold, Leopold would probably be the best for it, but if you got, like, a real scope gun, not, like, a red dot or holographic set of some sort, don't attempt it, really. It'd just be a waste of rounds. Whether you're doing this for Target or, you know, for a real-life situation, it's not worth it, in my opinion. But if you have some sort of holographic sight, you know, it's definitely going to be better. So, but, you know, sanding even, it's, it is, I wish I had them, yeah, for some more rounds. Um, I wish I had some more rounds, though, just kind of show you. But um, if you get the concept of it, it can work well. So, and everyone, yeah, uh, hopefully watch some of my other videos and any of that helps. 